Now in that Clifix folder that we downloaded earlier, we can find some other files as well. And the most interesting ones are these macrobats. So we have a macrobat project and a macrobat manual. So what are these macrobats? Well, basically they are racks that can do the same function that so far we've been doing with our clips. Um, because these scripts that are working on the background, they're just looking for you to input a comment to, to tell it what to do somewhere in the interface. So it can either be the name of a clip or it can be the name of a, a track right here. So we have a, um, or sorry, a device I meant. So we have a few different types of devices or macro beds. This one is called NK track and it's, well, it sort of does what it says. It controls the track that it's on. So it needs to be on that track in order, in order for it to work because that's how Ableton knows which track you want to operate on. So we're not giving it the track anymore by giving it the number. We just put the, the um, device rack on that track. So here we have uh, something volume, which controls the volume of the fader. We have panning, which controls the panning, and we have the sense. So um, we don't have to use this example project. We can just make our own, um, if we're in our own project, and we have a track right there, we can just use an audio effect rack, throw it on there, um, and then as long as we have Cliffix installed, this should work. So we'll call it NK track. And let's say we want to control the volume. And this, uh, this is one thing that I always forget, but in order for it to work now, you need to actually select another track and then select this one again. Um, because it needs to refresh. So there we go, we have the, we have the volume. Um, we can do pan as well. And again, we need to select another track and go back. And there we have the panning. Um, so this is pretty cool. Now we don't even have to use that text file if we don't want that. We can use these racks and set up quite complicated functions and then we can just MIDI learn these controls the old fashioned way, just hitting uh, what is that? Option M. So uh, with this we can also make our sort of our own control surface even if we have a very old unsupported MIDI controller if it just sends MIDI it's um, it's good enough. So there are a few different types of racks like I mentioned this is the track one it's a pretty simple one. Um, there's another one here called receiver and the receiver basically can send to another track so with this one it had to be on the track that we want to operate on. So if we want to control the volume, this one has to be on the volume track. With the receiver, we can actually give it arguments like we similar to what we did in the text file and let it control something else. So this one um, is controlling a volume, which is the volume of uh, bus A, as you can see on the right, or return track A. So on that track, in order for it to work, it needs to have the, um, the track rack and then you need to specify a name. So you say volume, and then you type the A volume, which you then um, use here to send to that track. Um, so that's how you can sort of control things from, from within one uh, track. So this, this track, I can control a return A, B, C, D, and I can do the panning of that, all from within one track. So that's very useful. There are some other cool things here, like we have uh, some randomized functions. Um, there's actually just one more thing that I want to look at. Um, and I, I just want to give you a short introduction of that because it might be too much to, to sort of discuss in, in one video. But um, to do that, let me first open the manual. So this, this is our macro bat manual. Um, we can see the different rack types, track racks, receiver racks, now we have drum and instrument racks, learn racks, also a cool one. Sidechain rack is very nice. It can listen to your audio output and then use that to control the, um, to control the knobs. Um, I want to look at the MIDI rack though, because the MIDI rack has something very powerful which is it has the ability to send MIDI messages. So in order for that to work, instead of having just the, um, the input for our control server, remember that we need to set our keyboard if we want to use some knobs from that to control these actions. Now, because we want to send MIDI, 
we also want to set the output for that controller. Um, I actually don't need to do that right now, but that's what you need to do if you want to set that up. So the really interesting thing about the MIDI part is that it can also send SysX messages. Um, let me just give you a short introduction on SysX messages. So SysX stands for System Exclusive and it's a type of message that developers use for their own hardware. So that's why it's called System Exclusive. Um, to give you a short example of that, let's see. I have a MIDI controller, which is the um, base 2 controller by Livid, um, that thing. And if I want to um, change like mappings on there or change, change the, uh, which buttons are mapped to which CC number and just change the whole layout, I can do that with this editor software and most, most of these controllers come with some sort of editor software like the MPD32, they have the um, PhysX controller and then um, I have a Keylab as well that has the MIDI control center. We use that software to change the sort of configuration of the buttons. So if I open my MIDI monitor again and I'll let it listen to this. So I'll say spy on output to destinations, and which means it's going to take a look at what's going to the to the controllers as well. If I do stuff here, like for example, if I um, let's say I'm just changing one knob here, now you can see that this sends to to my controller. And we get a different type of message than what we normally get. Like normally we got the node on and that stuff. Now we get a sysx message, which is actually a small file. Um, if we look into that file, we can see it all looks pretty random. Um, this is hexadecimal. So we can actually translate this and tell and sort of, because this just translates to, to normal like letters that we can read. Although normally, it, it doesn't really make sense what's in here. Either way, we can we can use this to get really in-depth control over our control surface. Like an example of something I did is I have that Keylab controller, and if I change a preset there in the software, so there's this software called Analog Lab that sort of comes with that keyboard, and if I change a preset in here, it sends the name of the presets to the display of the of the key lab. So I can actually see it on the hardware device itself. I can see that name. Now that only works with this software, not with just my device racks. Let's say I'm using an Ableton synth and I want I have made a patch there and I gave it a name and I want to see that on my on my display. I can send it that sysx message to display those letters. So in order for you to do that, you always need to capture the, the message first. So for that, we can use the MIDI monitor. And um, in this case, that doesn't work because I don't have that keyboard connected. But we can still do that for this. So let's say um, I change something here. We just get, I'll just use something random. That's fine. So we get this message right here. We can copy that whole thing. And that's the message we can send with one of those device racks. So, and this gets a little bit more tricky, like I, like I mentioned, but um, it's, a, it's a very cool thing, actually. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go back to that folder where the, where the scripts are at. That was in Ableton, and then package contents, contents, uh, app resources, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Cliffix. So there's one file in here that can be useful for this, and that's the macro bad user config. Uh, let me see if I can find that right there. Now, and in this file, again, it's explained really well how you should set this up, like how you should um, make your commands. But basically, you um, put it in something like this. So I have an example here from my old project which was the name of a name of a preset and I wanted to send that to the display. So this is an example of that. I just called the action sound one. Um, then you can just save this file when you've set up your sysx message. 
and then um, next you can actually use that within this this um, MIDI rack to send that. So you can inside this uh, rack you can give it the name of the command that you want, and then you can send that to the synth if you MIDI learn that. So this will actually output MIDI, and to do that you need to set the MIDI here to the um, to the device that you want to output to. This is a very very powerful option because it it basically means that you can make Ableton into your own controller editor as well. So you can change mappings and presets on your controller. You can change uh, all the lights on the controller. It's often handled by Sysx. So for example, if you have one that has uh, a button that can have multiple colors, you can you can control like the state of that button. So you can say, for example, if you're playing a track in Ableton, the button is green, and if that is recording, then it's red. So it's super powerful once you get into that. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, there's one more thing I want to explain, and that's error logging, because you're probably gonna run into some errors. So I wanna show you a quick way of how I um, deal with that.